This is about organ, soil organic carbon. And in recent times, there is substantial reduction in soil organic carbon. Because of the depletion of soil organic carbon, what happens? The efficiency of the fertilizers used will be reduced. Water retention capacity will be reduced. When the water retention capacity is reduced, you have to depend on more water or you have to feed more water. So, the ground water will also be affected. Ground water table will go down because you have to draw more water inside the ground, from inside the ground. So, this is very, very important phenomena and news report. Recently, ICAR Director General stated, that the depletion of organic nutrients in the soil has reached alarming proportions. So, the depletion of organic nutrients reached alarming proportions. The author, ICAR Director General says that the acceptable level of soil organic carbon is 5 percent, but some newspapers say 1 and half to 2 percent, but this author says that it is 5 percent, but in the soils of Punjab, they have gone below 1 percent and moreover 5.3 billion tons of soil is eroded annually. Soil erosion is the important problem and at the rate of 16.4 tons per hectare. That means the top soil cover which is the most important for agricultural purposes that is being lost along with the runoff. Then what is the soil organic carbon? And First of all, you should understand what is a soil organic matter. To know about soil organic matter, the reliable component of measurement is carbon. That is called soil organic matter, carbon. So, here soil organic matter, you see this is organic matter and it should be certain percentage in the soil and then only soil will be fit for agriculture. So, soil organic matter is composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and it is not that easy to measure hydrogen and oxygen. So, the reliable measurement for soil organic matter is through the measurement of soil organic carbon. So, soil organic carbon is measured indirectly to find out what is the total percentage of soil organic matter. So, please understand. The technical term is soil organic carbon. Soil organic carbon is measured so as to know about what is the quantum of organic matter in the soil. So, the soil organic matter is composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen but has small amounts of nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium and the article, another article pertaining to agriculture. I will discuss on Thursday or Friday. Yesterday, there was an article in Indian Express by Ashok Gulati and others with regard to the important aspect of usage of urea and government wants to reduce the consumption of urea up to 50 percent from the present day level by 2022 because India is using more urea than required and that article I will deliberate on Thursday or Friday and in addition to that, is the pharmaceutical prices. India is fixing the pharmaceutical prices or you can say fixing the rates of some medicines and whether it is counterproductive or not, we will deliberate on Friday or Saturday. And today, this organic matter we are dealing with in agriculture. So, soil organic matter is very, very important when one looks at the growth of crops and other agricultural practices. And to know about the organic matter, what we measure is the soil organic organic carbon. And we have seen it must be around 5 percent as per the author, but in some newspapers it is written it must be minimum 22 percent or so. And in some of the soils in our country, even the fertile soils in our country, the soil organic carbon has gone down to less than 1 percent. Then organic matter makes up just 2 to 10 percent of soil mass, we are talking about organic matter. Please differentiate between organic matter and organic carbon and by measuring the organic carbon, you can come to the conclusion, what is the state of the soil, how much organic matter is there. So, organic matter, 
is around 2 to 10 percent of the soil mass but has got a critical role in agricultural practices and it, con it contributes to the role of soil organic carbon is very important. It contributes to nutrients turnover and cation exchange capacity, soil moisture very very important. Soil moisture is very very important. When organic matter is less, then that soil will not hold moisture. If the moisture is not hold by the soil, then what happens? Crops require more irrigation water. So, because of more irrigation water, there will be more strain on the water resources in our country. So, then this contributes to degradation of the pollutants also. And what are the primary reasons? There are several reasons. One is it, there has been nutrient imbalance and this is overuse of urea. For the past several years, we are using more urea than this uh, phosphatic and potassium fertilizers. NPK, out of NPK, we are using more nitrogen and the ideal ratio is 4 to 1. Ideal ratio is 4 to 1. This is 1. But unfortunately, the actual use is, this is somewhere around 7 and this is 2. But this is also more 4. So, there is a lot of imbalance. Our fertilizer subsidy policies are some of the reasons for this. And government wants to control the use of nitrogen. Now, government realized. And on this, we will discuss in some other article written by Ashok Gulati. And there, I will explain what is wrong with India's fertilizer policy. And what went wrong since the beginning. All those things I will explain in that article. So, for the time being, you just think about nitrogen, phosphatic and potassium fertilizers are used and the imbalance is created in our country. Then, how to understand this phenomenon? Here, the indiscriminate use of organic fertilizers in wrong combinations. We have already seen that nitrogen is being used more and indiscriminate use of chemical fertilizers. And actually, if the country is using organic fertilizers with this organic manure and organic fertilizers, then we will not face this problem. But the country is dependent on this chemical fertilizers. That too, in chemical fertilizers also, there is an imbalance in the usage. So, chemical fertilizers is one problem. Imbalance is another problem. Because of these things, it rendered the soil incapable of regenerating itself. So, here falling moisture retention abilities also leads to this indiscriminate use of groundwater as I have already told you. The depletion of the soil is being reflected in the falling cereal yields in intensely cultivated regions like Punjab and Haryana. So, because of this depletion of the soil or you can say depletion of the soil quality resulted in the fall in the yields of cereal crops like rice and wheat in intensely cultivated regions like Punjab and Haryana. So, what is the role of the soil organic carbon? There are several advantages of the soil organic carbon. It plays a key role in maintaining the soil fertility by holding nitrogen, phosphorus and other nutrients for plant growth. If soil organic carbon is not there, it cannot hold this soil fertility by holding this nitrogen, phosphorus and other nutrients. It holds soil particles together. If organic matter is not there, soil particles cannot be held together and it also improves the soil properties such as water holding capacity. So, organic matter is very much essential for water holding capacity and that is very much essential when the soil has to use this nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Without the organic matter, soil cannot use the fertilizers even though you produce, you give the fertilizers in huge quantities. Here, it provides, it provides 
gaseous exchange and root growth this is very important gaseous exchange occurs then it plays an important role as a food source for soil fauna and flora several organisms can survive only when there is sufficient organic matter not only that it is acting as a buffer against toxic and harmful substances with absorption of toxic and heavy metals so it is absorbing toxic and heavy metals then soil organic carbon that is the largest of the terrestrial carbon pools terrestrial means land based so out of the land based carbon pools this soil organic carbon is the largest because it is being held within the soil so it is the largest component of terrestrial carbon pools and it is approximately twice the amount of carbon in the atmosphere and in vegetation so it is two times in comparison to the this carbon held in the atmosphere then if more carbon is stored in the soil as organic carbon if the more carbon is stored in the soil as organic carbon then it will reduce the amount present in the atmosphere and it will somehow reduce the problem of global warming and climate change also so finally what are the reasons for the reduction of this soil organic carbon soil organic carbon can be reduced if there are some natural factors like floods volcanoes and earthquakes and the human induced factors are over grazing by the cattle if the cattle grazes more then what happens this soil organic carbon is lost through the runoffs urban expansion improper management of industrial waste then land degradation due to inappropriate agriculture practices excessive tillage than more than required this is a tillage the crop is being tilled with this tractor and if excessive tillage is there then there is possibility that organic carbon may be lost then frequent cropping then poor irrigation and water management unscientific rotation of crops in fact the rotation of crops is not being undertaken properly in countries like india if at all rotation of crops is being undertaken then it is on unscientific lines so what is being happened due to the reduction of soil organic carbon this total factor productivity what is total factor productivity the total factor productivity is determined by how efficiently if we are giving inputs to agriculture what are the inputs fertilizers are the inputs so total factor productivity is basically how the inputs we are giving they are utilized in production so whatever the inputs we are giving whether they are properly utilized or not that is total factor productivity so the total factor productivity and the rate of response of crops to applied fertilizers is decreasing because of the less carbon what happens you see the soil nutrient use efficiency for phosphorus that means if we are applying the fertilizer phosphorus fertilizer then only 15 to 20% is taken by the soil remaining is going waste because the soil is not able to absorb because of the lack of this soil organic carbon similarly for nitrogen it is just 30 to 50% and sulfur it is 8 to 12% so because of lack of the soil organic carbon or reduction of the soil organic carbon the total factor productivity and the rate of response of crops to applied fertilizers is declining so what about the present soil health card scheme government in 2015 introduced soil health card scheme here farmers can get the soils tested for npk and get the appropriate advice on how to apply these inputs already 2.5 crore soil samples have already been tested but the major shortcoming is in the soil health card scheme this is linked with the chemical fertilizers but not with organic fertilizers so the author says that there is a need for linking this soil health card scheme with organic fertilizers also in addition to the chemical fertilizers then what needs to be done finally 
what is the need focus on research in universities and in addition to the evaluation of the efficacy of new varieties new varieties of crops on the basis of responsiveness to these fertilizers but also the responsiveness must also be measured against the application of organic fertilizer as well then current strains of rice wheat maize they require higher quantities of urea compared to pulses fruits and vegetables so we can promote this pulses fruits and vegetables in some of the areas mixed cropping on scientific basis must be encouraged so that the soil will maintain its cover or you can say soil will maintain its fertility which will facilitate and act as a hedge or you can say protection against the price risk and its ecological benefits right so desertification or complete depletion of soil nutrients sometimes you talk about desertification of soils and desertification of soils is nothing but complete depletion of soil nutrients is occurring rapidly in several parts of the country and government should take this issue seriously right friends we had thought provoking articles today and we will meet day after tomorrow have a nice day thank you